Hello and welcome back to the GCP Mindset channel. Today we'll answer the question, how are protocol deviations handled? Handling of protocol deviations can sometimes be a bit different from organization to organization, but usually there is a quite interdisciplinary team that records and reports them and then at the end prepares them also for subsequent evaluation for your clinical trial. So, first of all, let's define what is a protocol deviation though. A protocol deviation is where something was done in a clinical trial which is not in alignment with regulations or with the study protocol. We usually define very stringently what has to happen, what may not happen, and if this was deviated against, it becomes a protocol deviation. A good example of that is you should have your first study treatment on day one, and exactly two weeks after you should return to the study site and should receive your second treatment. Usually these visits have visit windows, for example, plus minus two days. But what happens if you return on week three simply because you were on vacation on week two as a patient? Well, this becomes a protocol deviation. And somehow it needs to be recorded that this happened, why it happened, and conclusions need to be drawn on whether it impacts the analysis or not. Therefore, someone needs to report this deviation. Usually you will find that both the clinical research associate or monitor or the data manager involved in the process of identifying and reporting your protocol deviations. Other parties, for example, remote clinical data managers, even statisticians, can also be involved in it, so it really becomes interdisciplinary. Sometimes you will even have information from a safety team or a medical monitor reported over to any of these other teams for the reporting purposes. So having so many different sources of where people could identify issues in the trial execution, you somehow need to align all of this. And this is where usually a central system comes into place that collects and aggregates all of this information. You can do this manually by keeping it an extra tracker, but that's not really recommended. It's better to have a system that does this automatically and ensures you don't miss any of the entries and you don't have duplications either. Either way, at the end of the day, you should have a full list with all the things where there were deviations performed in the, from the performed trial conduct that uh, violate either the protocol or general regulations. Now, the post-processing is also really important and interesting. Protocol deviations are categorized usually in minor or major. Sometimes you can also say whether they are critical for the evaluation or non-critical. The outcome at the end of the day should depend on the impact on patient safety, patient rights, data integrity, and data quality. And that usually determines whether something is rated as major, which has a big impact on any of these four categories, or minor. Now, one element where these protocol deviations play a significant role is in the concept of analysis sets. This is a statistical concept where you have all of the patients that participate in your trial, but some of them may simply not contribute meaningful data to your analysis. You shouldn't pick and choose individual ones which you exclude, but you have a predefined mechanism by which you decide whether or not you want or you can include them. A patient has entered the trial but has never received any treatment. You should probably not use them in the evaluation of whether your study medication, for example, improves overall survival of your patient. Instead, you should exclude them. And this would, for example, be done in assigning patients to these analysis sets. Now, one very commonly used analysis set, not usually for the primary analysis, but for supporting and really understanding what's happening in the trial, is the per protocol set. In the per protocol set, all patients that have a protocol deviation, which is considered as major or critical, are excluded and you only really look at all the data and all of the information contributed by patients who adhered in all elements that are critical to the trial protocol and to the regulations. And that allows you to basically look at the ideal patients who have not had any deviations and what the outcome is in that patient population. So you can see that from the idea of a study protocol to its analysis, a lot of things can happen. And a lot of things may happen in deviation of what you originally planned. And there is an entire process around managing these so-called protocol deviations and assessing their impact on the statistical analysis.